Hello everyone, my name is Yuval Bloomberg. I live, work and travel in uh, East Asian countries. This channel is all about things, topics that relate to uh, East Asia countries and East Asian cultures. So recently I started to add to uh, the portfolio news as well. I'm starting to go over uh, specific uh, topics in the news that relate to uh, East Asia. Today I'm going to review one of the most fascinating topics in the news, trade war. I'm sure you all heard about it. It's already running for the last uh, one year. Um, but it's not the only topic I'm going to review. There is another big topic that relates to this. This is the 5G. Did you hear about the 5G and how this topic is going to uh, change uh, our future? And now what is the connection between 5G and the trade war? So I'm going to review this topic. I'm going to explain it all, to explain what is the trade war about, what's the status now, the most updated status after the G20, how it's related to the 5G, and what's going to happen uh, next. So stay with me till the end in order to get perspective, the full perspective for these uh, important uh, topics. And uh, let's uh, jump in now uh, to the news. Okay, so let's start from the trade war. So what is the trade war? The trade war between US and China started uh, quite soon after Donald Trump uh, won the presidency in uh, the US. He was not satisfied from the way the trade is being managed, meaning China took big advantage on the US in terms of tariffs. China was treated in the US as a developed country, and um, if you order stuff from uh, AliExpress, I'm sure you know that you paid almost nothing for uh, shipments, and this was part of the policy. It was not for free because this was part of the agreement. This gave uh, China a lot of uh, competition's edge on uh, the U.S., but this was not the only thing. The tariff on goods from China to the U.S. were much lower in comparison to a tariff from the U.S. to China. So again, the competition between U.S. manufacturer and Chinese manufacturer was not fair. So Donald Trump wanted to reset the whole agreement. So actually it started with the U.S. launch an investigation into Chinese trade policies. This was happening in uh, 2017. And quite after that, it imposed tariff of billions of dollars worth of Chinese products last year. So this is like, last year it means like two years ago, because now we are in uh, 2019 and it started more than a year ago. So one year ago, if you are located in the U.S. and you want to buy something from China, you had to pay additional of 25% approximately to anything you want to buy. So of course, naturally, everything became much more expensive. So naturally, for many Americans, China lost some of the uh, competitive edge it used to have. I mean, it's not so cheap like it used to be. And this was the goal of Donald Trump, to decrease the import from China uh, to the US. So Donald Trump achieved this goal, but not completely, because the Chinese retaliated and uh, again, so they imposed their own tariff on the goods from the US and uh, to China. They did it, if you want to say they did it in a smart way. Why in a smart way? Because they targeted industries in the US that located in countries that support the Republicans. They wanted to hurt Donald Trump political base in the, the in the US. So nevertheless, uh, it's, uh, did, it didn't affect uh, Donald Trump's decision and actually he threatened to add uh, more uh, tariff to this uh, 250 billion dollars. Uh, of course, that when you have this kind of a battle between these two giant countries, uh, the US and uh, China, it affects the whole world uh, economy. But Donald Trump's goal from the beginning was to reset the relationship, the financial relationship, the economic uh, relationship between US and China. This was uh, his goal, and this goal is yet to be achieved. So during the last year, there were, there were some discussions between Chinese and Americans trying to get into agreement, but they didn't manage to do that, and uh, the trade war deteriorated. So we are talking today about 250 billion, but it didn't start from this. So today Donald Trump is threatening to increase it. What I'm saying today, I'm talking about the last week because just uh, two, few days ago we had the G20 and I will talk about it quite soon. But shortly, this is the trade war between uh, China and uh, the US in very simple uh, explanation. So we can see this graph telling us the story in a simple way, the red color represents China, Chinese goods export to US, and the blue graph represents 
American U.S. goods export to China. So you can see decrease in both countries. So it means that both countries lose from this uh, trade war. This is in like a simple way to uh, look on uh, the things. Now, I told you I'm going to talk about 5G. So what is the 5G? Let's start from a few photos and then it will be much easier to understand. 5G means 5 generation and it means that we had 1G, 2G, 3G, 4G, 5G. Now I don't know how old are you, but I am old enough to remember this, how it started. And uh, the, the only thing that you could have done with this was discussions, calls, very, very simple usage. Then we started to have the SMS, the messages. Then we started to have, this is 2006. So this is 1990. This is about, uh, I think 2000, maybe less. Yeah, maybe, I don't know. This is maybe 2000, I think, so I'm not sure. And this is 2006, when the uh, first iPhone appeared. And then, of course, the options were much more than just uh, SMS. We had the internet, real internet in the iPhone. Before that, they were only talking about having these capabilities in the 2G, but it was never real experience. Only the iPhone brought the real experience of surfing in the web while having iPhone, while having smartphone. So this is what we got. The 4G brought us much more things. But what is the difference between 1G, 2G, 3G, 4G? So behind this, you have actually the chips inside, which represent the revolution that happened during this year in the semiconductor industry. The chips became much more stronger, much more memory capabilities. So I don't want to get into uh, too many uh, uh, technological uh, details. I used to work for the semiconductor uh, industry, so I can give a lecture about this, but it's really not the place. The only thing you have to know that these tools became much more powerful due to the chips inside. So the chips enabled the improvement of the data transfer. So when we had the 3G iPhone, it was much stronger in terms of data transfer. Now the 4G became even faster. So then we could start to watch YouTube videos, real videos easily on the 4G. And a lot of things uh, happened and started to get uh, acceleration. All the social media networks got accelerated with the 4G because the social media today, for example, it's composed from a lot of visual stuff, videos and uh, Giphy and uh, images, heavy images. And you know, it's all running very fast. So it's all because of the 4G. Now, the 5G is going to change our life completely. The 5G is going to enable the IoT. IoT, it's Internet of Things. Internet of Things means every uh, tool will connect with every other tool. Meaning, for example, you, uh, you know, I guess you heard about the smart home. So your home will know that you are arrived. You will know how do you feel. Your home will be able to play music. Your refrigerator will be able to know what's inside and if it has to order some food. You will be able to download a movie of, let's say, two hours movie in few seconds. Today you need maybe one hour for this. By the way, in the 3G, in the 3G time, we needed about a day to do this. So this is the 5G. The 5G will change completely uh, the way we are living today. The data, there will be no data limitation. The data will flow freely from place to place. I mean, not freely, we will have to pay, but freely in terms of no technical limitation will be. Hospital will be able to manage surgeries from remote places. There will be no video streaming issues. Everything will become um, much more easy. And this will uh, bring complete new revolution, and not only for our life, but for the industry as well. So this is something very, very big. So this is the 5G. Now, how the 5G is connected with what uh, to the trade war? So China is racing ahead in 5G. What, what, what does it mean? It means that, uh, I guess you heard about the huge company called uh, Huawei. Huawei is uh, one of the communication giants uh, co uh, companies uh, in the world. It's a Chinese company. And they are uh, considered to be ahead in the race with the United States, with companies, technological companies in the U.S. So this has a lot of meaning because it means that today, if your country wants to invest in 5G and to build infrastructure for 5G, it means that they have to go to buy it from Huawei and not from American companies. This is like 
revolution by itself. Donald Trump said he will not let this happen. Donald Trump said he will not let the Chinese win this competition. This competition worth a lot, a lot of money and a lot of workplaces and a lot of reputation and a lot of other things because imagine you're, imagine that China is leading uh, this way and taking the lead on the US on something which is so major we're not talking about something small we're talking about something which is a major it's going to bring this going to be the foundation for the next technological revolution but the technological competition it's not the only reason the Americans said that they are suspecting that Huawei represent, in a way, the Chinese government and they are going to use this infrastructure for the 5G to spy on them, to spy on the internet and to try, try to work actually for the Chinese government. Huawei denying these claims from the US, but the US exposed photos where, they, uh, where you can see the CEO of Huawei with uh, Xi Jinping they show that he has a very uh, tight connection with the Chinese uh, party, Communist Party. So you can assume that the Chinese government is involved in this uh, company. But, the, you know, I mean, the Chinese will not be the first one to spy on the Internet. You, you, you can count on that. The U.S. spying on the Internet for many years, and you can assume for sure that many other countries, Western countries, spying in the Internet, Still, when China is spying on the internet, in the internet, this is something new. This is something that creates a lot of fears. And the reason, maybe the first reason for the fear is because China is very different. People do afraid of China. I wrote an article about this, why, why the world is afraid of China. I will add link in the description. But one reason, of course, China is uh, the Chinese uh, government is a dictatorship. And there is no transparency. You don't know what they are doing. You cannot be exposed to their consideration. There is no free media. So this is one big reason why people, why countries, why the world afraid of China. Another reason it's because the cultural differences. People do afraid from the Chinese because they are different, because they have different culture, because the Western culture is not familiar enough with the Chinese, let's say, cultural goals, what do they want to achieve, how do they want uh, to live, stuff like that. So, this kind of fear is led to the U.S. Uh, decision not to sell anything to Huawei, to ban Huawei, and not to enable them to uh, win this race. Now, why China? is going all out for 5G. I think you already understood from the explanation, but here is something that they can add. National pride, for one thing, China sees 5G as its first chance to lead wireless technology development on a global scale. European countries adopted 2G before other regions in the 90s. Japan pioneered 3G in the early 2000s, and the US dominant, uh, dominated the launch of the 4G with the iPhone in 2011. Actually, the, the iPhone arrived when it was uh, 3G, but this time China is leading the telecommunication rather than playing catch up. In a TV interview, Jiang Zhou, Wang, the former chairman of China Mobile, China's largest mobile operator, described the development of China's mobile communication industry from 1G to 5G as a process from nothing to something, from small to big, and from a weak to strong. So this is a lot for the Chinese people. So they are very determined to win this uh, race. And here you can see that uh, it's, it's stated that the government control all three of the country's mobile operation, China Mobile, China Telecom, and China, China Unicom, and has been guiding them to deploy large scale 5G test networks in dozens of cities, including Beijing, Shanghai, and Shenzhen. In the US, it's much lower. US actually did not really start to deploy these networks. This is why the US is in uh, quite behind China uh, with the 5G. So only a few days ago, Xi Jinping and Donald Trump met in the G20 conference and Xi Jinping wants Trump to leave ban on Huawei before making a trade deal. So this is how it's all connected. So the competition on the 5G connected with the trade war. Now Xi Jinping's interest is to enable Huawei to win this race. He wants them to get what they need from the technological American companies. They want to buy stuff. Donald Trump didn't enable them to sell, didn't enable the American companies to sell to Huawei what they need because he banned them. And now uh, this is one of Xi Jinping's goals, to lift the ban from them in order to enable them 
uh, to continue their uh, progress and in addition in order to close the trade deal. So you can see here in this article, uh, this paragraph, concurrently the US has led a global effort to stop allied nations from using technologies made by Huawei, arguing that the Chinese government, which exerts significant control over domestic companies, could use those technologies to spy on citizens of other countries. This is what we've said uh, before. So the U.S. has already banned Huawei from doing any work with the federal government, a major move means as an example for other countries to follow. So naturally, President Xi has not taken kindly to the dual pressure campaigns by the U.S. So when he meets Trump during the G20 summit in Japan this weekend to discuss trade, among other matters, he will aim to stop both of them in one go. So the 5G became connected with the trade war. So for Xi Jinping, he's saying Trump must give up his entire strategy to get what he ultimately wants. So now, <clears throat> when they met in the G20 summit, Trump and Xi agreed to restart the US-China trade talks. Just to restart the trade talks. I remind you that these trade talks already happened in the past and failed, but now they agreed to restart these talks again. So it says here, U.S. President Donald Trump and China's President Xi Jinping reach agreement at the G20 summit in Japan. And Mr. Trump also said he would allow U.S. companies to continue to sell to the Chinese tech giant Huawei in a move seen as a significant concession. So this is something which is a, a real change now for Donald Trump because he banned them and he didn't allow the U.S. companies to sell anything to uh, Huawei, just to remind you. He said that they are spying on the U.S. citizens or maybe on the U.S. government, whatever you want. They are spying on them or they can do this uh, while uh, building the infrastructure of the 5G. So he changed his mind on that. And Mr. Trump has threatened additional trade sanctions on China. I guess that this means that if the, the agreement will fail. So, however, after the meeting on the side, lines of the main G20 summit in Osaka, he confirmed that the U.S. would not be adding tariffs on 300 billion worth of Chinese imports. So at the moment, it remained at, as it used to be, 250 billion. The trade war is continuing. It didn't stop, but he's not going to make it worse. It's not, he's not going, Donald Trump is not going to add additional tariff to uh, Chinese goods. He also said he would continue to negotiate with Beijing for the time being. For the time being, he yeah, keep things open, I guess, not only for additional tariff, but uh, also for uh, Huawei as well. And if the talks will fail, I guess he will cancel the permission he gave to American companies to sell uh, components they need to Huawei. So President Trump has positioned his trade talks with Xi Jinping as a win for the US, but he may have also given Beijing exactly what it wants on Huawei. So Xi Jinping got what he wants on Huawei, but the question, what he is going to give back for the U.S.? <clears throat> for me, I said it in the previous video, I do not believe that the U.S. is going to lose from this trade war because the previous situation where Donald Trump started from, it was very bad for the U.S. anyway. It was a bad situation from them. China took huge advantage of the U.S. in many terms, and Donald Trump stopped it. So even if uh, American companies, some of American companies suffering these days from China, to the long term, I believe that everything will pay it off because China will not be able to compete with the U.S. economy. The U.S. economy is not only bigger in terms of uh, GDP, it's much, much stronger in terms of technology. All the huge companies of the world are located in, in the U.S., you cannot compete with that. You cannot compete with them. And if you want to grow like China wants to grow, you must have American companies with you. You must be able to buy with them. You must be able to learn from them. You must be able to partner with them. You cannot be under a ban and still make so much uh, progress. So this is why I believe that eventually this war will end with, um, I, will, I will not say only a U.S. win, but um, it will go in favor of the U.S. in comparison to the previous situation that was before. So to the question, will what's happened in Osaka change the situation? So the true signal, the truth means that like ceasefire uh, opposed in hostilities rather than resolution 
of the dispute which has caused market turbulence and hit global growth. Mr. Trump said his meeting with Mr. Xi was excellent, as good as it was going to be, adding, we discussed a lot of things and we are right back on a track and we will see what happens. So I guess we will see as well uh, what happens. We will keep track on this topic. It's a very, very interesting uh, topic as it combines, I said, huge trade war, which actually I don't think happened ever before, and huge technology uh, revolution. It's all mixed uh, together now. And uh, like uh, Donald Trump said, uh, let's uh, see what uh, happens. I hope you enjoyed from the video. Feel free to comment and let me know if you want me to discuss uh, other topics uh, as well. Do not forget to subscribe to the channel and hit the notification bell so you won't miss any content I'm uploading quite frequently. Not only on uh, these uh, topics of uh, news but uh, other topics as well. Thank you very much uh, for watching. See you in uh, the next uh, video.